Hi, welcome to Edward Box Guitar Tuition. So my classic album inspection today is The Last In Line, a sophomore album by Dio. This was released July the 2nd, 1984. This is of course the classic Dio album lineup of uh, Vinnie Appice, Jimmy Bain, Vivian Campbell on guitar, and of course the great man on vocals, Ronnie James Dio himself. So what's this album like? How does it compare to the Holy Diver, which is one of the most perfect metal albums? Um, I think it continues the classic run. Um, uh, the Dio was on, although I don't think this is good, it's got some subtle differences which we'll uh, get into. Um, uh, recorded Caribou Ranch in Colorado, I don't know where that is, but it sounds quite a nice place to record. Opens with uh, We Rock, actually all written by Ronnie James Dio, the music. Um, great opening track, um, a Dio classic, I think. Um, I should say, like, this follows this formula of um, sort of the Holy Diver style of tracks. So Dio have obviously kind of hit on that, you know, with the heaven and hell mob rules with its kind of like for likeness. So you could argue that We Rock's kind of like the stand up and shout of the album. Although there's a track called I Speed at Night, which is more like that. Um, this is a great track. I think it's got a real sing along chorus on this, and I think that's the difference with the album uh, to Holy Diver. There's a bit more vocal harmonies on the chorus, um, and the choruses, sorry, and. Uh, there's an emphasis on getting more catchiness and commerciality into the songs. Remember, this is the time, the year before uh, Metal Health by Quiet Riot has become the first heavy metal album to make number one. So it'll be in the thoughts of bands, uh, you know, how how do I get, uh, you know, a hit or how do I get my music more commercially accessible without sacrificing stuff? That's my kind of theory. Um, you know, there's isn't a compromise on this album, I don't think. But it has got just a little more of a commercial scene. Great song, this great drums from the Apache, great solo, great vocals. Um, goes into the title track, The Last In Line. So again, this is kind of like the like for like with Holy Diver. I actually prefer this track um, to Holy Diver as that kind of epic kind of plodder. I've probably heard Holy Diver too many times, but I really love this track. If you actually listen to the opening, I think Viv Campbell just slightly rushes the ba ba ba. Uh, ever so slightly um, it's a great track this has got my favourite Vivian Campbell solo uh, uh, of all time in the Dio era I love the way it builds I love the atmosphere on the long notes with the delay on um, there's always that thing what happened to Vivian Campbell I, mean, I know he's doing Last in Line now uh, and he's kind of playing his music again but it was kind of strange he was uh, one of the top metal players you know kind of in that uh, ilk with John Sykes the time of 83 and then in 84 you know you got your Jake he leaves you under Martinez George Lynch and um, you know Vivian Campbell was was featured and loved by a lot of players for his kind of fast sploozy style and pitch harmonics and then uh, obviously went to White Snake and then did River Dogs and Shadow King and he did and then Def Leppard and he just seemed to kind of disappear as a lead player um, anyway I love this track um, it fades out as does We Rock will come to that Breathless is next. Um, Dion Campbell, right? This really good, really, really good slinky riff on this again, kind of mixing with Gypsy. Uh, Gypsy's more raucous track on the Holy Diver, but again, it's got a kind of sexy, kind of slinky riff. Um, uh, really cool solo on this by Vivian Campbell. Uh, I think Campbell's playing on this album. It's just up from a notch from Holy Diver. I think his song is more consistent. Uh, I think the tones may be better. He has that strange, slightly thin tone. I mean, he used to write, roll the bass off uh, um, his um, uh, leads. So sometimes his leads seem a bit quiet. Um, just a little point is I've got like the, the sort of vanilla pressing of this, but I, I put the um, uh, the remaster from 2012, I think, on um, on uh, YouTube, played it through Bluetooth, and it's a lot better with the remaster. Um, the guitars kick ass more and the solo stick out more. Breathless, great track. Then you've got I Speed at Night. This is probably the fastest, franticest song Dio did. Really like the lyrics on this. I hate the light, I speed at night. Um, it's got a really kind of silly solo where Viv just fucking goes mega fast and does all those Gary Moore fast pentatonic blues licks. Um, Jimmy, Cam uh, Jimmy Campbell. Uh, Jimmy Baines obviously top on it. Vinnie Appice is great. I should mention actually Jimmy Baines fantastic on the title track. You can really hear his bass. That listen to the bass line on that track. Um, and then side one finishes with one night in the city. Um, 
Uh, another really good track. Um, great, great drum fills on this by Vinny Apache. Of course, not mentioned Dio yet. He's, he's superb through the whole album. He's, he's every bit as superb as he's been since he appeared on the, the, the first Rainbow album. Um, this is the second longest track on the album, actually, 5 minutes and 15. I think the first other thing you notice about some album is I think the band have sort of taken a notch up playing wise, obviously played together on tour. And you can feel a bit of more confidence in the playing. Um, very, very good. So side one of this album, how would that compare to, say, Holy Diver? Um, you know, Holy Diver's got uh, Don't Talk to Strangers, isn't it? You know, I stand up and shout, obviously the title track, they're kind of three classics. This has got We Rock and Last in Line, so, you know, Holy Diver just edging it there, really. Um, opening of side two is Evil Eyes. Again, this is written by Ronnie James Dio, the music. Um, quite a nifty writer, Dio. Uh, he's got basic guitar skills and he knows how to use them. I love this track. So I first, like a lot of you, I first heard this track as the B-side of Holy Diver. I remember my brother had the single of Holy Diver. I think we had the hi-fi in our little living room. First house I lived in. Well, the second one I can remember. And um, uh, I liked Holy Diver. I preferred the B-side. I love Viv Campbell's kind of lead intro on the original B-side, so what's different is that this is a higher tempo, it's more polished, the vocal melodies are slightly different at times. I think there's a subtle bass note change on the chorus, uh, or possibly the bridge, I think it might be the choruses. Uh, I actually prefer the solo on the middle solo on the original Holy Diver B-side version, but I do think this benefits from more tempo. Uh, We'd be lies if we didn't say that it's kind of like Neon Nights and Turn It Up, like particularly Turn It Up The Night, The Change, but I love this track. It's got bags of energy, and interestingly enough, it kind of does a double verse in the chorus and then goes into solo. So instead of having the traditional verse, chorus, verse, chorus, then solo, um, works really well. Next up is a track um, which I always kind of, people are like, oh, you know, they've kind of been forced to do the single, the commercial track. Um, Basically, it's mystery. So this is kind of like the Rainbow and the Dark track, but obviously Rainbow and the Dark are really raucous, and the keyboard line was probably added because it's sounded cool, but it gave it a commercial quality. By this point, there's probably a little bit of rattle company kind of look, guys. You know, we might need a single because um, that's the way things are going. So I've always been a bit, you know, oh, this track, because um, it's of that ilk, but actually it's a really well-written track. Um, it's got a, a really good verse. The, the bridge is excellent, the half-time bridge, very catchy chorus. I mean, and Dio was always good at these tracks, you know, do you close your eyes? Just walk away is good um, on um, uh, Heaven and Hell. Uh, um, slipping away, you know, more catchy tracks. Um, so I've actually been really enjoying this track, really good solo from Viv Campbell again. Uh, I think the solo is consistent. Jimmy Bain co-writes this and he came up with the keyboard part, I believe, on Rainbow in the Dark. So it's been quite interesting to discover this track. Uh, I've enjoyed it. So the next track up is Eat Your Heart Out. And I think this is the weakest track on the album. I like it. Uh, got a really good chorus. Um, quite interesting middle eight. Um, uh, cool solo. Um, uh, but it's kind of funny arrangement. It kind of does a half-time chorus at the end without any guitar. Uh, one point and then kind of fades out. Um, I think it fades out, um, uh, but it doesn't, um, you know, it doesn't entirely work. Um, obviously, you've had straight through the heart, you know, and then you've got to eat, uh, just like the beat of a heart on the next album. You know, it's in that ilk, straight through the heart, it's classic, but um, it, it's okay. Um, and then Egypt, the chains are on, um, is the final track. This is a, there's another sort of class Dio epic. This is played live quite a bit. Um, not up there with Heaven and Hell or Sign of the Southern Cross or Shame on the Night, I think, does, does um, you know, better it. Again, comparing the Holy Diver there, but I still think it's a great track. Really, um, really interesting solo. Um, really good extra guitar part on the end. Great ad libs from Dio. Um, so, you know, finishing off the album, I think this album, you know, those people who prefer this to Holy Diver, and I can see why. Uh, you know, Holy Divers like a 10 out of 10, 9 out of 10. I think, you know, before I put, had a good listen to this recently, I was kind of, it was always kind of 8 out of 10 in my head because I was kind of less bothered about mystery and eat your heart out. But listening to that, I think it's a 9 out of 10. I think 
Um, it just grow the, it keeps the DNA of the Holy Dower album, but it does grow the sound and it's suitably different enough. Um, I think the problem was by the time I got the Sacred Heart, they're kind of locked in the sound a bit. Um, uh, but um, it's, it's, it is really good. I think the, the production's good. Um, the band all play, you know, out of the skin. Uh, and it's, it's pretty remarkable that that run of Dio albums, you know, Rising, along with Rock and Roll, Heaven and Hell, Mob Rules, Holy Diver, Last in Line, three undisputed classics, but also I think most people think, well, actually those other second albums in those runs are also classics as well, but maybe not quite as good. But there's always debates. There's always people who prefer along with Rock and Roll, prefer Mob Rules, prefer this album. You know, he's the only person to accomplish his feat. Um, and it's been done really because he's got amazing collaborators, you know, Rainbow, Richie Blackmore, then Tony Omi, then Vivian Campbell, and obviously in this band, uh, the, you know, the other members contributed a lot of um, writing as well. Uh, and that was really the sad thing with the Dio band, you know, the, the original band really was one of those special lineups with special chemistry. Um, and, you know, uh, they produced these these great uh, first two records. Um, the only criticism of the album, that's kind of similar to Holy Dog, but I think it's even more prevalent, is there's a lot of fade-outs. Um, uh, we Rock fades out, Last Line fades out, Breathless fades out. One Night in City fades out. I think I Speed at Night has an ending. Evil Eyes fades out. Mystery fades out. <laughs> yeah, they all fade out. Um, which you know, uh, it'd be quite interesting if the band had constructed more endings. But um, again, that's such a common trope of the time. There's still bands and recordings are still stuck in that nineteen sixties thing. You know, fading out. You don't really get fade outs. Now bands tend to finish songs. Uh, anyway, that is my review of the Last in Line. It's a great record. Um, uh, and I would say at this point in time I'm liking it more than I ever have. I think when I was young I actually preferred it to Holy Diver and then Holy Diver overtook it. But I kind of got more into the Deer. Deer were kind of secondary band for me in the 80s. It was a kind of band I listened to touch bass with all of my favourite bands. It's kind of more in the last 20 years I've uh, listened to Deer more. Um, but this is a great record um, and yeah so hope you enjoyed that. Remember to share and subscribe. Uh, and I'll see you again soon for another classic album inspection. Thank you very much.